there is a red trio. Yeah, red trio. I was gonna wear my pink lipstick, and then I was like, I'm going with red. Yes, red, damn it. It's a good color. Apparently, it also <laughs> makes you hungry. And they put it in restaurants. I don't know if that's true, but I it, it might be. I'm always hungry. <laughs> Same. Welcome to WonderCon. Thank you so much. This is my first WonderCon. Oh my God, so you're a WonderCon virgin. I am, but I am popping my cherry. <laughs> cherry. <laughs> How fun is it to be on the show and for your character to be such a kick-ass female? I mean, it's amazing. We are so lucky uh, to have a diverse writers' room that writes women so well and allows us to be complicated. Allows us to have these amazing scenes. We were talking about things that actually make us full individuals as opposed to just talking about going on a date or how our kind of lives are affected by men in our lives. It's, it's definitely not that show and it's so exciting, it's refreshing. I, you know, it's, it's not often that you get there. Yeah. It's really cool for a comic book show for it to have such realism in it because sex trafficking is a real issue. I like to call it sex tr slavery. Sex trafficking makes it seem like it's almost consensual. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. You're totally right. And it is slavery. It's modern day slavery. And that, and it's going on at such an alarming rate and such an alarming rate in, in America, which, you know, I wasn't actually that privy to it, to be completely honest. I think that's one thing when we hear about human trafficking, we think about third world countries and we don't think about how much and it's terrible to say that because sometimes it sounds like it undermines that doesn't mm -hmm. it doesn't I think it's just for us to bring our awareness to the fact that it's hap happening everywhere and you know we can educate people with telltale signs of what to look out for because it happens at, in every neighborhood yeah we just don't see it often than not exactly now as a woman what have you brought to the role? Because I know I've been sexual harassed. I've had stuff happen to me. I'm sure you've had things happen to you as well. Yeah, and I mean, there's the things that I'm not going to talk about on camera, but, you know, I, I definitely, you know, just growing up, even in this industry, uh, you deal with a lot of sexism and, um, you know, you, you deal with a lot of people telling you that you can't say that or you can't do that or you have to be this because you're a woman. And, you know, just like I was saying before, when you read certain scripts and they're just not interesting, a lot of time I'll read a script and I'll want to play the male role because it's so much more well thought out, it's so much more interesting. Um, so the fact that we have these complicated women that are giving women a voice as well is, is really important and we owe so much to you know Marvel and Freeform for allowing us to tell these stories and you know our showrunner Joe Pekaski is so brave and you know put together a great writer's room and doesn't doesn't hold back. One last question. Can you give me a clue about your vigilantism in this coming season of Cloak and Dagger? What kind of clue would you like? kick-ass booty kick and clue. <laughs> There's a lot of action. Um, she definitely doesn't hold back. Uh, I got to train Krav Maga uh, prep for season two, which was really, really fun. Um, so yeah, you'll see a lot of action and it was really fun doing, like I did most of my own stunts and I, I love the fact that we also are allowed to do that. We're allowed to collaborate with the fight scenes to make sure it's authentic to what our character would do. Um, but yeah, it's pretty kick-ass. Like season two is like season one on a lot of steroids. Well, I cannot wait to go steroid. Thank you so much for talking with me. And Thank you. Can't wait to see more kick-ass McGon. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. I do love your outfit. Oh, Super cute. You.